Based on a true story, a nun receives divine visions while hiding a sinful relationship with her apprentice. Benedetta and her parents, Guliano and Medea, stop by a statue of the Holy Mother to pray. However, a group of bandits surrounds them and steals Medea's necklace. Benedetta threatens that the Holy Mother will punish the men. As if proving her, a bird sends droppings on the man who took the jewelry. Amused, the bandits decide to return the necklace and leave. This allows the family to reach Pesha. Upon arriving at the monastery, Guliano offers Abes Felicida fruits and wine for taking his daughter, promising to send more yearly. Still, the Abes asks for a deposit. The man recounts how Benedetta was born sickly, and God saved her so they promised to give her to him. Felicita has heard similar stories before, so the father needs to convince her to choose Benedetta out of other applicants for their nunnery. With that, Guliano agrees to send more payments. Soon, Sister Jacopa collects simpler clothes for Benedetta. When she notices that the girl brought her own statue of Mother Mary, she takes it, insisting that they only pray to the one at the monastery. That night, the girl tries to sleep in her bare room but struggles. She sneaks out and prays to Mother Mary when the platform under the statue breaks and it drops over Benedetta. The nuns arrive to take the figure off the girl, who explains that she went to pray when the statue suddenly fell. Some call it a miracle that Benedetta is unharmed and the statue wasn't broken, but Felicita insists that miracles don't happen so often. Years later, Benedetta acts as Mary in a play in the church when she has a vision of Jesus calling her his wife. After the play, the nuns and their guests enjoy a banquet where Benedetta tells her mother that she saw Jesus and he called her his wife. Medea, however, dismisses this. As her parents are about to leave, a peasant woman runs inside the monastery and grabs Benedetta begging to be saved. A man then arrives and pulls her away forcefully, causing the nun to fall. Because of this, Guliano knocks the man down. Felicita stops the fight, and the desperate woman, Bartolomea, tells the abbess that she loves Christ, so they should let her stay in the monastery. The man reveals that he's her father, and they don't have money to pay for the monastery. Pitying her, Benedetta asks her parents to help, so Medea spontaneously offers to pay for Bartolomea's stay. Guliano complains about this, but the abbess sees an opportunity and reminds reminds the father that the rich cannot enter heaven, so she encourages him to save the woman. Convinced, Guliano agrees and even pays Bartolomea's father to leave the woman alone. That evening, Benedetta helps Bartolomea bathe to prepare her for her new life. During this, the apprentice slips, leading the nun to awkwardly touch her. This sparks something in Benedetta, but she ignores it. She soon notices the bruises on Bartolomea's legs, so the new apprentice shares that after her mother died from the plague, her father tried to take her as his new wife. She refused, but he forced her, like how her brothers used her before. This was why she wanted to escape. Benedetta comments that beauty can sometimes be a curse, which surprises Bartolomea since she's never had a mirror to see her reflection. With this in mind, the woman approaches the nun closer to see herself in Benedetta's eyes. Just then, Sister Christina finds them, so the two head back to their rooms. Before parting ways, Bartolomea kisses her new friend. This makes Benedetta nervous, so she prays in her room to have someone else teach the woman since she can't do it. The next day during choir practice, Bartolomea looks over Benedetta's shoulder to see her notes but gets tempted by the woman's figure, so she touches her. Benedetta gasps at her touch and sees a vision where snakes surround her. Jesus arrives and slices the monsters, warning her that the demons are trying to keep her away from him. He assures her that they won't be separated before kissing the woman. However, this has her acting out the events, making the others watch her with worry. Later, she confesses to Father Paolo that she keeps seeing Jesus, but she was afraid when she had the visions. Paolo thinks her visions might be false since Christ would have filled her with joy. One day as the nuns work, Bartolomea accidentally bumps into Christina, making her drop spools of threads into boiling water. This leads to the two arguing, so Benedetta steps in, pointing out that the apprentice was careless. She orders Bartolomea to remove the spools from the hot water, or she'll send for her father to take her back. Afraid, Bartolomea plunges her hands into the boiling pot, but luckily Luckily, Christina pities her and makes her stop. Because of this, Benedetta is sent to the abbess's office but denies wanting to punish Bartolomea for her mistakes. Instead, she wanted to deliberately hurt her, though she doesn't know why. She insists that she doesn't hate the woman, but when asked if she has feelings for her, Benedetta hesitates before clarifying that she sympathizes with her. As punishment, Benedetta is ordered to assist the sticky Jacopa. She proceeds with her task that night and sees bloodstains on Jacopa's bedsheet. When she tries to help the woman with her dress, Jacopa refuses, so Benedetta reminds her that pride is a sin. The older woman 
one notes that everyone has sinned, like how she was born Jewish and the other nuns have had children before entering the monastery. As penance, Jacopa reveals a wound on her chest, which she believes is a sign from God. With an idea in mind, Benedetta takes a golden plate from the hallway and uses it as a mirror to see her body. Conflicted, she starts praying again. The following day, everyone wakes to Benedetta thrashing in bed. A doctor sedates her in the evening but can't figure out what's wrong with her. As Benedetta sleeps later, Bartolomea visits her, confessing that she wants to be with her. She then kisses the woman before leaving. The event has Benedetta dreaming about bandits attempting to force themselves on her. Fortunately, Jesus arrives and kills the man, saving her. The woman thanks him, only to discover that her savior isn't Jesus after all. The unknown man slaps her and slices at her chest, making Benedetta scream in real life. So the nuns sedate her again. One morning, Benedetta wakes up to learn that Bartolomea is assigned to watch over her while she's ill. The woman questions if Bartolomea intends on tormenting her, but she denies this. While fixing up their room, the apprentice finds Benedetta's old statue of the Holy Mother that she'd hidden in her dresser. Learning that it's her mother's, Bartolomea sets it up in the room to appease the woman, and it works. The two prepare for bed that evening, so Benedetta draws the curtains between them for privacy. However, her companion deliberately drops her robes on the floor to make her pick them up allowing Bartolomea to see her. The woman just says that it's a joke before going to bed, though she can't help but think of her companion's body as she goes to sleep. Later, Benedetta dreams of Jesus asking her to show herself to him. When she points out that she's not allowed to, he assures her that she shouldn't be ashamed in front of him, so she does as she's told. At his command, Benedetta reaches her hand to his, and she starts feeling pain. Bartolomea wakes up to hear her crying, and when she checks, she finds wounds on Benedetta's hands. In the morning, Benedetta presents her wounds on her hands and feet similar to Jesus Christ's. Thinking that this is a stigmata that identifies her as a holy woman, many of the nuns kneel before her, though Felicita is doubtful. She later asks the woman if she was praying when the wounds appeared, so Benedetta tells her that it happened while she was dreaming. Felicita remarks that all holy figures who received the wounds got them during prayer, but Bartolomea insists that Benedetta is telling the truth. Abbot Alfonso, the head of the monastery, is soon called to investigate Benedetta's stigmata, which won't stop bleeding. However, her forehead doesn't have marks for Jesus' crown of thorns. Still, the abbot considers believing Benedetta, much to Felicita's surprise. The two later discuss the matter in the abbess's chambers, but they're interrupted when they hear Benedetta screaming. When they check, her forehead bleeds, and she shouts in a male voice, threatening them with a plague for doubting his wife. Benedetta then collapses and Christina steps on a broken shard, making her doubt that her wounds miraculously appeared. Learning this, Felicita warns the abbot against taking Benedetta seriously, but the man refuses to risk bringing heaven's wrath on them. Soon, Benedetta's condition spreads amongst the people, who now believe that she's a saint. Christina urges the abbess to discredit the woman, but Felicita knows that they don't have evidence to convince everyone. One night, Benedetta dreams about Jesus giving his heart to her, so she wakes Bartolomea, telling her to see it for herself. With this, Bartolomea reaches to her chest, and the woman gasps at her touch. The leaders of the monastery eventually appoint Benedetta as the new abbess of the nunnery, believing that Jesus chose her. Christine protests, saying that the nun should choose their abbess. Alfonso asserts that this is God's will, while Felicita orders Christina to stand down, accepting her demotion. After this, Felicita gathers her belongings from the chamber but reveals a hole in the wall before leaving. Benedetta and Bartolomea arrive afterward, but before they can get comfortable, they learn that Jacopa's condition has worsened. Christina and Felicita volunteer to watch over the ill woman, and during this, the younger nun expresses her anger about the former abbess's demotion. Felicita explains that this is a ploy to get the monastery more financial backing. Christina questions, calling Felicita her mother, but the woman reminds her not to say it within the nunnery. Felicita advises her daughter to stop fighting since it will put a target on her back before leaving. Leaving. Just then, Jacopa wakes from a nightmare before passing away. Thinking that this is an omen, Christina approaches Paolo and lies that she witnessed Benedetta inflicting the stigmata on herself. That evening, Benedetta teaches Bartolomea how to write when the latter uses the chance to kiss the new abbess. When she doesn't reject it, the two take their activities to bed. 
The next day, Paolo encourages Christina to tell everyone what she confessed to. Hesitantly, the woman tells them that she saw Benedetta inflicting the wounds on herself. To her surprise, Felicita asserts that Christina wasn't there when the new abbess got her wounds. Suddenly, Benedetta screams in a male voice, ordering the woman to be punished for lying. Paolo agrees, so Christina weeps and punishes herself in front of everyone. That evening, Bartolomea shows Benedetta that she carved her old statue to use in bed. They proceed to use it, unaware that someone is watching from the hole in the wall. Suddenly, a red light comes from outside as a comet passes by. As everyone watches this, Christina appears over the roofs and throws herself off the structure, ending her life. Felicita rushes to mourn her daughter, but Benedetta reminds her that she must bless her body since Christina took her own life, which is considered a sin. Instead, Felicita tackles the woman, blaming her for her daughter's death until the others pull her away. Having lost everything, the four the former abbess heads to Florence that evening. Benedetta assumes that the former abbess plans to speak to the bishop to discredit her. This worries Bartolomea, revealing that she also thinks Benedetta's miracles aren't true. The woman insists that God was speaking through her, but when she encourages Bartolomea to touch her, she refuses, disgusted that Benedetta truly believes that she's holy yet spends private time with her. This leaves Benedetta to satisfy herself, but she breaks down in tears afterward. Suddenly, she gets a moment of clarity as she predicts that every Everything will soon be revealed. The following day, Felicita arrives at Florence where the people suffer from a plague. She reports Benedetta's activities with Bartolomea to the bishop and urges him to visit the nunnery to see it for himself. That night, the monastery holds a procession to beg for mercy as the comet still looms over them. Alfonso reminds everyone that in the Bible, when a great star fell from the sky, it was a sign of an epidemic. Terrified, everyone kneels to pray except for Benedetta. She approaches the crucifix and kisses the ground before it. Afterward, she thanks God and tells everyone that the comet is a sign that he is protecting them from the plague. With that, everyone praises God and Jesus. Benedetta then approaches the village's knights and orders them to close the city gates and not let anyone in or out. As the nuns head back inside, Benedetta suddenly collapses. The following day, Felicita and the bishop arrive at the city gates but are refused entry. Alfonso meets with them, so the bishop announces that he is there to meet Benedetta. However, the abbot reveals that their abbess passed away this morning. Not backing down, the bishop insists on holding her funeral, but the knights aim their weapons, insisting that they cannot enter. Still, the man argues that they're sent by God, so Alfonso has no choice but to let them in. The group rushes to the monastery's church, where they find Benedetta's body. Seeing that she doesn't have the markings of the plague, the bishop blesses her when Benedetta suddenly wakes up and screams, begging Jesus to return. Tearfully, she claims that she was in heaven, but Jesus sent her back to save everyone from the plague. However, the bishop declares that hell awaits her and arrests her for her secret relationship. The following day, Benedetta stands trial, and Felicita testifies that she's seen the abbess sharing her bed with Bartolomea. She reveals that she witnessed this through a secret hole in the room, and Alfonso points out that spying is also a sin. He believes that Felicita is spouting accusations out of jealousy, but the bishop reveals that the woman's testimony isn't their only evidence against the abbess. He calls on Bartolomea to question her, and she denies the accusations, even when Felicita recounts how the woman carved a statue to satisfy Benedetta. This shocks the others while the bishop calls their actions blasphemous and deserves the death penalty. Still, he gives Bartolomea a chance to save her soul by confessing, but the woman asserts that the allegations are true. Because of this, the bishop and his men drag Bartolomea to the dungeon to torture the confession out of her. The abbess is soon called to speak to the bishop next. Noticing him massaging his feet, she offers to wash and massage them for him, though he wonders if she's seducing him. The woman returns the question, wondering how he'd be familiar with such actions. Just then, she notices something on his leg but doesn't tell him. Suddenly, the bishop's men arrive, bringing a wounded Bartolomea. Benedetta rushes to embrace the woman, but Bartolomea pushes her aside, revealing that she has already confessed to their relationship. She yells at the abbess, accusing her of seducing her to sin. To prove their relationship, she reveals their hidden statue inside a carved book. Suddenly, the abbess yells in a man's voice again, accusing the bishop of mistreating his wife. The men take her away as Benedetta screams that they will all burn in hell. Later, 
the bishop discovers that Felicita has caught the plague, so he orders his men to move her to the dungeon so people won't see her. Benedetta is then imprisoned, while Bartolomea is expelled from the monastery. After all this, the bishop discovers lesions on his chest, revealing that he has also caught the plague. He hides this when another nun tells him that Benedetta requested to see Felicita to ask for forgiveness. Benedetta soon visits the former abbess and assures her that Christina is waiting for her mother in heaven. Felicita denies this, knowing that her daughter is in hell for taking her own life. The younger woman assures her that God knows she gave her life to him even though she didn't truly believe he existed. Felicita defends that God never spoke to her like he supposedly talked to Benedetta, but the other woman promises that she will still be rewarded for her efforts. This confuses Felicita, but knowing that she is dying, she chooses to believe the woman she had been trying to denounce. As the woman hugs her, the jug of water on her table drops and breaks on the floor. Soon, Benedetta is paraded to the plaza to be executed. Bartolomea pushes herself against the crowd, begging for forgiveness, but the prisoner merely tells her that she was meant to be betrayed. As the bishop takes his place before the prisoner, he finds the villagers angry by his decision to execute the woman they think is a saint. He whispers to Benedetta that he will give her a less painful death if she admits her sins to everyone to quiet them down. Defiantly, she confesses only to being unable to protect her people. She then speaks again in a man's voice, showing stigmata bleeding from her hands as she accuses everyone of betraying the woman he loves. She casts a curse on them, and the people fear her, more so when Felicita stands beside her, showing her infection and thus proving that the plague has entered their city. The former abbess claims that the bishop is the one who brought the sickness to them, and this angers the man, so he orders them to be thrown into the fire. With that, Benedetta is tied to a pyre, but a man throws a rock at the executioner, making him drop the torch to the side of the kindling. This triggers the people to riot, and a few rush to save Benedetta from the flames. The bishop retreats, but the villagers corner him. Bartolomea helps in freeing Benedetta, but discovers a shard from Felicita's water jug at her feet, revealing that this is how the woman caused the wounds in her hands. Despite this, she frees the woman. The villagers beat the bishop and tear his clothes, only to discover the lesions on his skin. Despite this, one woman stabs the man in anger. Benedetta calms the situation and offers to bless the bishop's soul. He asks if he'll go to heaven, and when she says yes, he concludes that she's still lying before taking his final breath. After this, Bartolomea pulls Benedetta away. Before leaving, they find Felicita approaching the pyre, ending her own life to join her daughter in heaven. The following day outside Pesha, Benedetta wakes up the church bells and discovers that the monastery is on fire. She plans to return to save it, but Bartolomea thinks it's pointless. Her lover offers to take her anywhere else, believing that the people might discover her lies and execute her if she returns. However, Benedetta believes that Jesus will protect her as she is fated to stay in the monastery. Hearing this, Bartolomea shows her the shard, revealing that she knows the woman faked her stigmata. Benedetta still believes that even if the villagers try to burn her again, she won't die. Realizing that the woman is mad, Bartolomea screams at her as Benedetta walks away, choosing the convent over her. After this day, Benedetta is imprisoned in the monastery until her death at the age of 70. Despite this, one of her predictions did come true since the plague never spread in Pesha. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.